Tonight I'm going to share with you what the British government has done stockpiling Baxter's vaccinations. What we're dealing with is an Anglo-American genocidal operation. The vaccine pipeline runs from Britain to the U.S. There is a very, very esteemed researcher, virologist and geneticist who worked to actually develop Tamiflu for Roche Corporation. World-renowned, recently retired, did the basic thing that I just said, it's common sense. He took the genetic sequences and looked at the rate at which mutations were taking place as the Mexican flu H1N1 was now so suddenly coming to different parts of the world and he was studying these sequences and what did he find? He found that six of the eight genes appeared to come from North America and two came from Eurasia. That's interesting. What the heck would something like that be doing in Mexico? And he says, quote, it's clear that all eight genes have speeded up for the last seven years. And he says, that struck me as really, really strange. But how in the heck did two viruses do that, he asked. Continue, quote, I bumped into an advertisement for influenza vaccine for pigs, and that contained three different viruses. End quote. The vaccine was supposed to contain kill versions of the virus, but what if there had been, he asked, what if there had been a lab accident and had survived? End quote. So Dr. Gibbs, his statement here has a long history that the plagues, the recombinations that we're witnessing in the viruses, uh, the book Emerging Viruses shows you also Ebola was a recombinant laboratory creation. Who says, well, the fact is the top leading expert in the whole field of diagnosing emerging viruses, Psy Coulter, way back in the 60s, in the meetings, in the scientific symposiums, said it said what you're looked at today as a crazy person for saying, how dare you, Dr. Horowitz, say that Ebola came from the labs. Gibbs went on to say this. They were talking specifically both human and pig vaccine manufacturers use, use eggs to grow these viruses today for the flu vaccines. Gibbs notes that studies have shown that this odd avian environment can accelerate their evolution, these viruses' evolution, these viruses were not properly killed, he speculated. They could have reassorted in a pig and created new H1N1 strain. Very, very obvious Occam's razor, common sense type of thesis he raises. He says, quote, not killing off the virus could explain the whole thing very neatly, end quote. And yet you had officials of Centers for Disease Control and World Health Organization within hours of him saying this and capturing the media's attention they discredited him and his whole thesis. Of course they would. What else would they do? They're heavily implicated in global genocide. What would you expect them to do? So before they put the spin on this now, Reuters popped out that this was extremely bizarre, that it didn't look like a natural flu from the beginning because it was a recombinant of both H5N1 and H1N1, and H5N1 is avian, H1N1 involves not just the flu that you're witnessing now, but sequences apparently they even suggested of the Spanish flu. So in other words, you've got the world's most feared influenza viruses here. Avian, swine, and Spanish flu in a recombinant, reports Reuters and officials at the very beginning of the news. And I believe that that's exactly, they were reporting correctly at that point. Then they flipped it. You know, because I got on it, a bunch of other colleagues got on it, and then they started to to spin the news. Let's look at Baxter's and Baxter's genocidal history because it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever unless you are considering global genocide to trust health to Baxter Corporation's vaccinations. This is the major company that's putting out the flu vaccines being purchased and stockpiled. By the way, this is an American corporation with Chinese laboratory connections and manufacturing capabilities in China. 
What is Baxter's history? Number one, Baxter is associated with H5N1 contaminated vaccines. And here's the sad reality. I already told you about how unstable these viruses are. I've already told you what these head honchos have been planning, priming the population. I've already told you what Reuters reported about the various sequences in the unstable, easily rearranged, easily mutated, recombined, new forming plagues that are circulating. And I've told you about psychological operations. Now here's where you can begin to see the big picture. Because it just so happens that Baxter Corporation, one blip it came out on the mainstream media for a half a day on page 35 of a newspaper, and basically it got no major airplay, had two, quote, accidents with their vaccines and their vials of these viruses that were being transported throughout Europe. Oh, such a coincidence. Two separate incidences. One where actually the vaccines had been shipped to vaccine manufacturers. The viruses and the vials of viruses with vaccines and the vaccines had been shipped to various vaccine makers across Europe that were somehow accidentally contaminated with these various strains. How do you think they discovered the fact that these vaccines were contaminated? Because probably a few people died right off the bat. And then they looked and they go, oh my. Where did this vaccine come from? Why, it came from Baxter. Let's call Baxter up and find out what they have to say about this. And they came out and said, we don't know how it happened. It was some sort of a laboratory accident. And that's all she wrote. And the next one was a train accident. How many of you are aware, having read, that there was some sort of a train mishap? I believe it was in Switzerland. Oh, and it made such minimal news, it just was a blip, and that was the end of it. So what have you effectively done with your accidents? You've got a Mexican flu evolving up, let's say, assuming, it's, assuming they're telling us correctly, which you never know. Because the numbers currently of people dying from this alleged hideous, horrific pandemic are so small that it's obviously a psychological operation for your induction. But Assuming they're telling you the truth that this is a new virus that's spreading up to North America and then from North America they've been tracking it to Asia and then to Eurasia. Well, gee whiz, what's going to happen when that goes to Europe and meets the people who got infected with the accident? Unstable viruses. So if they're telling us the truth, then it is obvious genocide and they have already loosed the big one, which they're telling you is coming. All the officials from World Health Organization and CDC are saying to you right now, it's on the news every day, the teleprompters are blowing, you know, the first case and your first death in England. The, it's like they're telling you by the fall they're saying you can expect the big one, that this H. One N1 virus is going to grow in strength, they say, to become the big one. So this is what they've done. Now, now you understand why Barack Obama has already legislated that every American is going to have three injections this coming fall.